Good morning, everybody. My name is George Carmen. Uh, I live in Belbray, and uh, I am a, an earth scientist, so there's a strong bias in my uh, personal understanding of the area, and that is the geology. Um, I'm proposing uh, or suggesting that people give consideration to supporting the idea of a resource centre. Um, I'm suggesting it's called Daintree because you'll see that uh, there's a lot of information that uh, uh, is uh, to be shared uh, revolving around Richard Daintree. Um, most of you know him through the Daintree Forest in Queensland, but in fact he spent about the first 20 years of his life in Victoria, and uh, indeed um, his major project in Victoria was mapping uh, the Bellarine Peninsula, which is that uh, sepia map underneath there. I'll, I'll go a little bit further into detail on that uh, in the next slide. Um, the, at this stage, I will just say that the name is negotiable. Um, if Alcoa wanted to call it the Alcoa Daintree site, I, that would be very welcome. It could, it could be the Victorian uh, Al, Daintree site with the state, uh, with the state support or the Dick Smith, or the Etihad, or what have you. It needs, the message is it's going to need money. Um, I'm, I'm envisaging this to be something like the uh, Ballarat Gold Museum. So it's a, uh, a resource centre for learning um, for, for, as, a, as a museum uh, with historical aspects, and, uh, and also, of course, related to the industry in the area, the, the mine. That's just so at this resource centre, I'm suggesting that uh, there are at least nine areas that could be uh, considered uh, for storing, for learning. Um, the, the Daintree Bellarine map collection, um, it's also uh, suggested that it houses uh, the, the Daintree photographic collection. Richard Daintree brought one of the first cameras to, to Australia in the late 1850s. And whilst he was surveying this area, uh, he took photographs which were purchased by the state government, uh, luckily, um, and so they're preserved in the uh, museum in, in, or the state library in Melbourne at the moment. Um, I say luckily because uh, when he worked in Queensland, he was appointed as the uh, representative of Queensland to, to promote uh, that, uh, that state at exhibitions in, in the UK and in Paris. And when sailing back to, uh, to England to attend one of these exhibitions, the ship hit the, the Cape of Good Hope and all of those Queensland photograph plates were lost. So it was very lucky that uh, Victoria had purchased his plates. Uh, the history of the Anglesey coal mine, of course, should feature in this. It's been a, a very prominent part of the history of the town. Um, and I would suggest that there is space for an Alcoa legacy section as well, so uh, the, the actual contribution that the company itself has made. Uh, Christopher's Anglesey Fossil Collection, I'll speak a little bit further on that. And then also rooms or space to cover the history of the Jarosite Mine, um, an area where rehabilitation has not taken place, and we have a, 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 an abandoned mine site just outside the town, um, which is a tourist uh, attraction in its own right. Um, and then a centre to, to house uh, the types of things that have been talked about from Angier, uh, the flora and flora of the area, sorry, let's just say flora and fauna of, of the area, um, perhaps an ornithological uh, centre. Um, in the UK, um, we look at the UK a lot for tourist uh, um, uh, innovations. Uh, ornithology is a huge tourist uh, uh, um, builder, particularly in the area that I come from. Um, my brothers uh, make a, a good living out of... Uh, visitors from the cities coming to see the birds. Um, and also perhaps uh, a little more innovative in terms of looking at uh, the impacts of um, climate change, sustainable communities, futures uh, of, Alcoa, uh, of Anglesey, including perhaps documenting this process. This is quite a remarkable process that uh, Anglesey is going through at the moment. <coughs> so just a little bit about Richard Daintree. Um, his maps, uh, as I said, uh, he was commissioned to map uh, uh, Geelong to Queenscliff uh, and all of the Bellarine. Um, he was uh, commissioned to try and win the prize of £1,000, which in the 1860s was about a million dollars, to establish a commercial coal mine. He didn't find the Anglesey coal mine, he missed it by a whisker. He mapped all of that area, he had a crew of men they hand dug shafts to 30 metres, 
I bet you know how hard it is to dig a post hole. He hand dug shafts to 30 meters to look for coal based on the, based on the only knowledge that there was a seven inch seam of coal at um, Port Arlington. His maps had to be drawn from scratch. There were no base maps. He had to survey the land, survey the creeks, and then put the geology on top. So you'll find there's a lot of information on his maps that are, that are just of a historical note. Of note. So for example, uh, on Spring Creek, when you get into the fine print, you'll see that it, remark, it comments that uh, William Gundry, uh, Joseph Gundry lived there. The map shows that he had a steam-driven steam sawmill, a wool shed, a dam, and a homestead. It shows the Belbray Primary School. It wasn't Belbray in those days, it was called Janjuk. It was just listed as National School. Um, he missed it by a whisker because, what, although he mapped, as, as, sh as shown in the bottom left there, he, he came just south of uh, Bells Beach. He, the the um, geological museum, or the geological, the state museum in, uh, in Melbourne does have samples submitted by Daintree from Point Addis. And if only he'd just gone around the cliff of the corner, around the corner of the cliff, just a little bit further at Point Addis, he would have seen the coal, he would have won the prize, but he missed it. His maps are at what they called quarter scale, that is two inches to the mile. Um, they were found in Dublin in 2006. They'd been lost. And they were returned to Australia in 2006. And you see the lady there, a curator in the museum, looking at uh, the larger suite of maps, covering something like four by, five, uh, four by three metres with the Bellarine Peninsula in the southern end there. Um, these maps uh, are, of course, uh, a, a national treasure, uh, but they have been scanned at high resolution, and so to duplicate them and use them in a resource centre would be very easy. This is just one example of the, the photographs. So as I said, the, uh, the Victorian state purchased his uh, um, uh, uh, plates, and uh, this is a picture of Bird Rock. Um, there's very interesting studies to be made. If you go and stand to take a, a photograph today, you'll see there's very little change in the topography uh, since 1861 or 1860, whenever he took that photograph. Uh, there were about 200 of these photographs for the state of Victoria. Christophel's, uh, so I, I, I've given a talk to Anglesey Historical Society on, just on Daintree, and it's a one hour talk, so I could spend all day here. <laughs> um, my pitch is uh, Daintree was looking for a forest. You all know him for the Daintree Forest in Queensland. He was looking for fossilized wood in the form of coal. Christophel is, um, made a lifetime study studying uh, fossilized leaves, which are extracted from the the overburden in the Anglesey mine. And when uh, Professor David Christabel from, Christopher, Christopher from um, Adelaide University retired, he donated his leaf collection to the state, to Victoria. And so they're sitting in archive boxes as well, in, uh, in some dungeon, dungeon somewhere. There are 5,000 of these specimens, and they're a wonderful resource, again, for learning. Uh, studies have been done on the evolution of these plants. They're all about 15 about 15 million years old, and um, you can trace evolutionary trends in these, in these species of uh, former eucalypts, mostly, uh, and most of them have died out uh, uh, over time. There is one species that has preserved through to the present day, and it's really ironic that one species that is living today is in a creek called Noah Creek, in a place that we all know as Daintree Forest. Amazing. Um, I, I mentioned the Jarosite mine. There's a history there. It's a, as I said, it's a, a, a mine site that had, has not been rehabilitated. Um, but there's some documentary, uh, documentation to go into that. So I put this introduction slide up again just to remind you of the scope of the, uh, the resource that we could have. Um, and, and as I said, if there's a, a Sheikh Mohammed in here that would like to call it Sheikh Mohammed Garden of Eden, then uh, let's go for it.